I believe and try I can be happy with me It's so hard to be confident in your abilities But everyone has a special talent in which they can believe You're watching the Children's Corner. Hi, I'm Nana Lee. Hi, I'm Karina. Hi, I'm Karen. Hi, I'm Tabitha. Hi, I'm Brandy. And, and you're watching the Children's Corner. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Children's Corner. We have a wonderful guest with us today, a very talented and creative woman and a great actress, Miss Verna Day Jones. Welcome to the Children's Corner. It's my pleasure. I'm Mrs. Oso Snow. And of course, you just named me. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some fabulous uh, stories to hear today, I believe. Well, at least three. <laughs> three? Well, I've got a cute little poem that I want to read to the kids, too. All right. Would so you like you... me to go first? Or yes, that okay? would be great. Well. I'm going to read three stories today about animals. And reading these stories, I have discovered that animals have a great insight into what we humans are really like. And we may not think that animals know the ills and maybe love and all of those kinds of emotions, but they do. And one of my first stories is called Padrick the polar bear. Patrick the polar bear lumbered genuinely alone over the ice. Ahead lay snow, snow, and snow, and snow. The breaks were many and dangerous, and Patrick had a long way to go home. He missed Pearly White, that was his wife, very much. It was never good when they must separate, but alas, whenever the fish were frozen few and far between, in the Arctic it was needed. And Patrick and Pearly White had mouse to feed, the cubs, also Pearly's ancient parents, White Frost and Kodiak. As Patrick patted on, his thoughts were many, a Kodiak had been a great hunter, and now his steps were slow. And White Frost followed also slow behind. But Patrick had grown to love them both over the years, and so he did not mind to hunt alone. It was great in the old days when he and Kodiak sallied out together. They had always returned laden with plenty of fish and fowl. Oh, those days were now scarce. Patrick worked harder to keep his family together. He had heard the gossip of the pack. Many thought he had abandoned White Frost and Kodak. It was the way of it. That's the way it was. But then 
The young became old, don't they? It was a hard thing to think about, and it was only in times such as these that Patrick even allowed such thoughts to enter his head. But always, his heart stood strong. Patrick stiffened, senses keen, and listened. He could see movement on the distant ice. He waited, slowly crouched, but the movement stayed in one place. Slowly, Patrick crawled closer. Patrick's eyes were puzzled, for there, in the middle of nowhere, on a tarp laid a cub of mankind. Patrick had never ventured close enough to mankind to see before. And he was curious. Curiosity curled his claws tightly into the ice. There were many legends of mankind. He crept steadily closer. Surely one of mankind was nearby, but there was no one in sight. Finally, he was right upon the man cub. It lay crying and squirming in the cold. Something in Patrick heart melted. He could not contain himself. Slowly, he pulled the tarp edges over the squirming man cub. He looked around carefully and finally picked the tarp up in his teeth. The man cub was cradled within. Patrick dashed back towards the glacier's cave and laid the tarp at Pearly White's feet. It is a female cub, said Pearly. They often throw females away. Patrick knew the legends, but he only half believed them. He had heard that mankind threw away the young and the old, but he could not believe it. Now he had seen it with his very own eyes. What shall we do with it, said Pearly White, sadly eyeing her own hungry cubs. We shall keep it, said Patrick indeterminately. But it has, it means one more mouth to feed, implored Pearly White, I'm the ancient parents. Then we shall spread the fish a little thinner, said Patrick resolutely, and there will be enough for all. He tucked the fish head into white frost paw. She ate it quickly. Patrick went back out to hunt again. He waited patiently along the break to one hole warm. Suddenly, fish were in abundance, and Patrick caught enough for many weeks. He thanked the good Lord for his luck, and he hauled the bounty home. And in his heart, he swore no one of his family would ever be discarded on the ice. And Patrick named the man cub Mercy to seal his oath. That was wonderful, thank you. May I say something about the story? You remember when I said that the animals, they have a sense of what we're like? And just think their idea of what we humans are, are, but yet we know that many of us, <laughs> our parents would never throw us on the ice. But I think this story is, is such an insight into animals, don't you think? Yes, it's a wonderful story. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Verna, that was a great story. I love the one about Patrick the polar bear. Well, we'll be right back with more stories. Thank you. Welcome back to the Children's Corner. Verna, I have a little poem I'd like to read to the kids, too. And I'd like to hear it myself. Well, you know on those days when it's not so pretty outside, not like today where we have this gorgeous day, 
but a day when it's full of rain and you kids get bored? Right. Well, when I was a little girl, I read a story about a little girl named Susan and how she didn't like the rain. So I'd like to read it to you guys, okay? Susan in the rain. Susan Amantha Cottonwood was a little girl who was always good when the sun shone. <laughs> but when the clouds piled up in the sky and when it began to rain, she would cry and cry and moan. Susan Amantha hated the rain. She would press her nose to the window pane and complain and complain and complain. There's nothing to do if I can't play outside. If the sun was out, I'd take my doll for a ride. I'd bounce my ball, I'd swing on the gate. I'd go around the block on one roller skate. But there's nothing to do in the whole wide world when it rains. Now one summer she went to the country to visit her grandpapa and her uncles and aunts and cousins and her grandmama. She played in the barn on the piles of hay. She played in the meadow the live long day. The sun shone bright and Susan was happy, but one day it rained and Susan complained. Her grandpapa was amazed to hear so many complaints and he said, I fear you don't know why we have the rain or you wouldn't complain. We have the rain to water the crops, to make fine lettuce and big beet tops. It makes the corn tall row on row and the apples juicy and the blackberries grow. It fills the rivers and streams and lakes. It softens the soil the gardener rakes. It washes the dust from all the leaves and makes a song as it dips from the eaves. Why, nothing would grow on our very own farm if it didn't rain. Susan, don't complain. Susan and Mantha Cottonwood told Grandpapa that she understood, but just the same, it just wasn't much fun when there was no sun. Susan went home and though she tried, never less when it rained, she cried. One day the postman rang the bell. Mother opened the door and said, well, 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 here's a package for Susan from Grandpapa. When Susan got the strings untied and opened the box she found inside, a bright red umbrella, shiny black boots, and a red plaid raincoat with a rain hat to suit. Well, the next day it rained. Did Susan complain? No. She put in her boots and her raincoat and hat, and she took her umbrella and went spitting spat out in the rain and in all the puddles. Rain thumped her umbrella, rain sprouted her coat. Each boat was as wet as a shiny black boat. She splashed and she splashed, as happy as could be, and she said, why the rain is fun, and it's raining just for me. <laughs> so see guys, even when it rains, you can have a good time. Uh, Jerry, I got one for you, and it's short. Well, here Love we go. Have you ever seen a wizard? Conjure magic like a blizzard, turning fairies into lizards in the land where lizards live. Did you ever see him dazzle? Dragons, demons in a frazzle, using herb, including basil, getting them to always give. All the powers he could manage, all the powers he could damage, pressed together like a sandwich, sifted through his magic seed. If you haven't ever done it, read a wizard like a sonnet with a little magic on it, uh, then you haven't learned to live. That was a great poem. I love that one. Well, kids, hope you've been enjoying the show today. We've got something special that I wanted to tell you about. We're going to go see what's happening in Baltimore right now at the harbor with Tommy the Bucket, one of the new street performers. Mm. There's a little bit of island music for you. Oh, 
That was incredible. And he made all this himself out of recycled buckets. Wow, it's wonderful being here at the Visionary Arts Museum. And one of the best things here is the bubble magic. Let's go see what it looks like. Wow, let's go listen to one of my favorite performers. You guys want to see some great magic? Well, you guys know about John the Wiz, right? Well, he's our children's corner magician. He's going to be right back with us. So stay tuned, folks, for John the Wiz. You say Monica. Okay, anyway, Monica is here, and she's going to help me with the comedy. <laughs> because you see, in magic, you not only learn, but you learn how to use skills. Uh, for example, public speaking, uh, being creative, and also being interesting and providing people with entertainment. On the count of three, Monica, say, hi, Monica. Hi, Monica. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. You go, whoa. <laughs> well, what do you know? It's our dove. Monica is a, a young person like all of you who are watching TV. Everybody is young at heart. And you are curious about how things work. Well, on the count of three, Monica, say, hi, Monica, one, two, three, hi, Monica. The world works like this. The more you put into the world, the more you get out. You have to learn, you have to grow, and you have to expand in order to be on top of your world. Welcome back to the Children's Corner. I'd like to introduce some of the wonderful children we have here today. This is Tabitha, this is Brandy, and you are? Kirsten. And you? Alexis. Well, welcome to the Children's Corner. What was your favorite thing you did today, Alexis? Um, I really liked the stories. The stories? Yeah. Which was your favorite story? The one about the polar bear. About the polar bear? <laughs> Patrick the polar bear? Mm -hmm. That was a great story. What about you? What did I you like the best, tell. Kirsten? Pa Patrick the polar bear. You like Patrick the polar bear? I like mostly the polar bear. Susan, do you like to play in the puddles too? <laughs> Me too. What is your favorite thing, Tabitha? I like the poem about Susan too because she hated the rain and then when her papa gave her the, um, the um, present with the umbrella and the raincoat and the rain boots, um, she liked the rain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nothing like a gift, is it? Well, what was your favorite um, thing about the musician? What did you think about Tommy? Did you enjoy him? What did you think about our exciting guest, the magician? Well, that was cool. I liked how he did all the magic tricks. <laughs> great. Um, Alexis, what do you think about the fact that Tommy, our great musician, uses recycled items like big, giant plastic buckets and makes incredible music? Well, I think it's very important to recycle, so I enjoyed the fact that it was very great music and that it helps the world too. Yes. So. Well, I think we all have to go out and get some buckets and start a band. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Did you enjoy the music? Yes. Do you have a couple buckets at home you might be able to put together a group? Let's see, we got a group right here, don't we? We got four girls. It'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, after we've had this great day here at the Visionary Arts Museum, I don't know what my favorite place is, but what about you? What was your favorite exhibit? Um, Brandy. My favorite exhibit was the one where you could press the buttons and the people would do something. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Did you have a favorite one, Kirsten? The poodle. You like the giant poodle? She is pretty cool. What would you call her? What would you name her? Princess. Princess? Princess Poodle. That's good. And what about you, Tabitha? I like the big giant poodle. You like the big giant poodle, too? Yeah. Alexis, which one is your favorite? I like the poodle and the lady that spins around. I love the lady. Yeah. You know, she reminds me of Dolly Parton with that big wig. Yeah. She yes. um, I like her a lot, too. She's pretty cool. I love that orange dress. And I believe she's one of the bottom performers. Do you know Divine? Hmm. You don't? Uh, John uh, Waters. Oh, John She Waters. was one of his uh, talent. Oh, excellent. Well, yes. she is amazing. I love that creation of her. Well, what about that car, guys? Now, that car is really something. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. That's neat. I'm like kind of partial to the elephant, too. What do you think of the elephant, Brandy? Pretty cool. I also like the flying saucer and the car. Oh, the flying saucer. That's excellent. 
I like to ride away in that flying saucer. What about you guys? Me. You too? You ready to escape in a flying saucer? <laughs> well, maybe we could just ride off in the sunset with that big poodle. What do you think? <laughs> we could do that too, couldn't we? Hey, we could take a ride in that car. That's the coolest car. I bet you've never seen a car like that. I'd rather ride the poodle. You'd rather ride the poodle? Okay, we got it all set now. You're taking out the poodle for a spin. You're taking the car? It's mm, a yellow. Elephant? Okay, she's taking the elephant. That leaves you with either the uh, flying saucer. Flying? Oh, flying saucer? Yeah, Gosh, I guess like it. You got I'm the car? Going over to the beach. She's going to the beach. Okay. <laughs> well, then I guess we better call it a day at the Children's Corner because we got a lot of things to see at the Visionary Arts Museum. So let's get looking around the museum, guys. Welcome back to the Children's Corner. Here's another story that well, I, I'm going to read another too, but this is one that I really would like to share with you today because it has a lot of meaning. Well, to me, it's one of my favorites. Well, I can't wait to hear it. It's called Sermon on the Mount, named Martha. Anybody here named Martha? All righty. Martha the mule labored under the burden of her agency. How many times she wondered, oh, good Lord, how many times indeed must she make this trip up the hill and down? smiling to this one, gadding at that one, always having to put her best foot forward. She had had it. This was quite enough. It was the straw to break the good camel's back. This was the mule's back. <laughs> Must she constantly be squeezed through the eye of the needle? Enough is enough. She would refuse to serve. The owner had been rich indeed on her labors and now he had booked her for the big festival and to carry one of mankind who was at least six foot if he was an inch. But that's the way it was with mankind. If you give them an inch, uh, they always took a mile. Martha struggled up the mountain, as she thought. She was sure-footed and adept, and animals existed in all the barnyard. At the top of the mount stood the man. The crowd was mercenized but hungry. Martha dropped her burden to the ground. The barley loaves and fish rolled a bit, but the young boy gathered them alert. Martha sat to soothe her aching souls and watch the man was grateful with an air of elegance. From time to time, the crowd laughed. So, thought Martha, the man has a sense of humor and also that kind of urgency. Martha considered for a moment. Well, hmm, maybe she would do it after all. She was tired of all the barnyard gossip. She would show them that she was not a stubborn mule as Rodrigo. She would show them that she could crow to anyone. Sunday she was at her post. As the man mounted, Martha stiff. A sudden knowledge in her heart. The man was an unbelievable burden, as though the world was on his shoulders. Slowly but surely, Martha began the journey along the path to the golden city. Mankind followed in her footsteps, laying leaves of palm along the way. Finally, and oh, was Martha glad of it, the man dismounted to the sounds of cheers and hails. Suddenly, he turned his face to her. Such eyes, 
she had never met before. He moved gently to her side and stroked her. Immediately, Martha felt the joy of her youth return. The burdens of mankind lie heavy on all of our backs. Peace be with you, my child, he said, and kissed her gently on the forehead. Martha melted as she watched the man walk to his doom. She felt large tears rolled down her stubborn eyes. Martha, uh, she staggered back to the barnyard. And somewhere in the dark, deserted corners of the barn, Martha renewed her faith. Can anyone tell me what that story was about? No one? Don't recognize her. That's the story, I guess, of the crucifixion, if anyone's familiar with that. Well, I really enjoyed the story of the Sermon on the Mountain. Oh, with that's Martha. one of my favorites. It does have such a spiritual mm -hmm. and strong feeling to it. Well, thank you for joining us today. And we had a wonderful time. And I want to thank our guest, Verna. That was really fabulous. Those stories were amazing. The kids really enjoyed them, didn't they? Thank yes. you. It was my pleasure. And the children, the young ladies. Yes, our young ladies ah, today. They were wonderful. Well, again. It's nothing like uh, entertaining young people who do show an interest. And these young people today just were just marvelous. Well, there's nothing better than reading a great book, whether it's full of stories, poems, or just adventures. Yes, yes. So give yourselves a big hand, guys. <laughs> well, great show today, everyone. Didn't you have a good time? Yeah. Well, thanks for watching The Children's Corner. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. contacting me, I can be found at hypnotic1969 at hotmail.com, H-Y-P-N-O-T-I-C, 1969 at hotmail, or you can reach me, 410-925-3524. Any questions, comments, gigs, give me a call. H-A-P if I believe and try, I can be happy with me. It's so hard to be confident in your abilities, but everyone has a special talent in which they can believe.